Where is the problem in your project? Hello, welcome back to the Hello World Show. I'm Heather Downing. I'm Spencer Schneidenbach. And we're here at NDC Oslo with John Skeet, the Stack Overflow King. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Yes, and I understand you have a Pluralsight course coming out in the yep. future, right? In fact, a, a longer version of what we'll be discussing today. Oh, excellent, excellent. So how did you get started in tech? So I first started programming on a ZX Spectrum when I was eight, um, or eight or nine, and loved it from there on. And I remember my first big software project when I was sort of 10 or 11 writing a logo interpreter. Do you remember logo with the little turtle and you say forward 10 and turn right and things? It's way before you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, but yeah, it, it was a project that I would not attempt now because it's a, a big thing. And I was 10, so I didn't know it was difficult. So I just did it instead. And but yeah, that's, that's there's perfect. actually a lot of power in that too. If you don't oh, don't know that you can fail and don't know that it's a big deal, yeah. you just take that risk. Yeah, I, I wish I had that sort of confidence now to just go ahead and do stuff. It's awesome. I understand. Now, uh, you are you a family person too? So yes, yes, I have. Uh, I'm married and I have three kids. Um, my wife is a wonderful children's author. So yeah, we, we have a lovely time in Reading, just west of London. Now, are any of them old enough to start coding? Yes, so my oldest is coding bits of Python and HTML and things, um, partly at school, partly at home, doing some Arduino stuff and things. I'm starting to try to teach uh, my younger, so I have twins who are 11, um, and I'm trying to teach them a bit of C-sharp. Um, we've had a look at some Python before, Ooh. but it's uh, I get nervous if I'm trying to teach something without really knowing it. I don't really know Python. <laughs> but you work at Google, right? So do. doesn't everybody have to know Python at Google? No, fortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> so however much we talk about polyglot programmers, and that's an awesome thing, and I know that to be a front-end developer, you need to know kind of everything. everything. I know nothing. I know Java <laughs> and C Sharp, that's it. No, I know them fairly well, but that's all. You, fairly well is an understatement. Yes, I would well. say that that is an understatement of the century, considering yeah. you answer more questions on Stack Overflow in the realm of .NET and C Sharp than anybody else I've ever seen. That's true, yes. yes. Yeah, I, I make the most of what I do. do. And, and I think the funniest thing that I read is like the, the, re, the questions that you've answered continue to give you residual points on Stack <laughs> oh, yeah. Overflow. Yeah, it's I just, don't really need to be answering questions to hit the rep cup every day. <laughs> Um, which is a weird situation to be in, certainly. <laughs> nice. Well, we are so thrilled to have you. Thank you for joining us. Great to be here. All right, John, what do you have to teach us today? Diagnostic skills. So this could be either you've got a problem that you have no idea where to start solving, or you know that you've got a problem and you think you're going to need to ask something on Stack Overflow, but you've heard really mean things about <laughs> everyone will tear my question apart, and I want to give you the tips so that it won't be torn apart, and you may not need to ask it in the first place. I like it. So we'll start with... An assumption, just one sample um, scenario. So you have a big ASP.NET web application. So we've got a client coming in here. So we've got the browser, and then it's pop, you know, nice, nice model. So we've got um, our controller, and that's going to talk to um, a repository with some kind of reporting in, so you know, products or whatever. And the, the browser saying, okay, I want you to give me the 12.05.2017 report. And the controller is going to ask the repository for the data. And then it's going to spit out some XML. And the problem is, it's coming out with the wrong data. Okay, so you could drop all your problem, the whole of your code, you know, from, from the view that's asking for the date, to the controller, the SQL repository, the bit that's turning it into XML. And that's a terrible, terrible idea. So you need to find out where the problem is. And a lot of people really post Stack Overflow questions and clearly haven't got beyond, I've got this bunch of code that's wrong. So we want to start off by saying, well, SP.NET's not bad to debug, but it's relatively painful. And so on mobile applications, it's sort of, who wants to bring up a new mobile application development environment? It's, it's painful. You want to be aiming for console apps, okay? So console apps, even if you never use a console app normally, they're great for debugging. You just start it, and it started. You print stuff out, and it comes out, and you can see it. The debugger always works for a console app. No extra servers being started up, etc. Next thing to do is get rid of the browser. I mean, you haven't got a browser at the moment anyway, but get rid of the user input. So you could use console.readline or whatever, 
or you could just hard code it. 12, 05, 17. You know, you're not trying to build real code at this point. You're trying to build something that shows where the bug is. And then you say, okay, so I've, I've got a console app, and maybe it's printing XML to the console as well. And can I reproduce stuff? So if you now can't reproduce the bug, then maybe it was something to do with ASP.NET itself, in which case, yeah, you need to go back to ASP.NET to solve it. Otherwise, you're basically trying to cross stuff off, you know, rub stuff off from here. So maybe first thing you try is, well, I'll talk to the repository directly. So you know, let's scrub out the controller for the moment, move your main method so it just talks to the repository. Don't bother with the XML either, and just look in the debugger. Maybe that's simpler than writing it out anywhere. Have I got the right stuff? OK, yeah, that, that seemed to work. So if that works, you don't need to be testing that anymore. You can have some dumb repository that just returns hard-coded data. So you know, you've got fewer things again. What about the XML? If you start with hard-coded data, do I get the right XML out? Yes, I do. So the problem can't be there either. Oh, it's got to be somewhere in the controller. And so you look, well, I had this hard-coded string, and I'm calling maybe datetime.parse, and it's giving me the 5th of December instead of the 12th of May. Ah, oh, OK. And at that point, you've got one line of code that is wrong. And at that point, A, you can search for what's going on. You can ask your colleagues. You can look on Stack Overflow. There are hundreds of questions about date time parsing. <laughs> but you've got rid of all the rest of the stuff. And this sort of divide and conquer, um, there are lots of different ways you could do it. So if you imagine you've got this huge, huge application and you don't know where things are, you can either build up by saying, I will take that tiny piece in isolation as a separate little console app. And there, you might need to try all 16. Or you can take your whole application, make sure you've you know, done a git commit to something reasonable, and just scrub out half of it, see which half it's in, and then you know, switch it around. Um, so you can either start from the bottom with small pieces, or you can start um, by taking the big thing and dividing it each time. So then, question: yeah. Would you al would you always start with removing the user input first, or like do is there a rule of thumb that you? Have? There are no rules for this, and the great thing is, while you're doing all of this code, you're not writing real code. It can be as hacky as you like, <laughs> so long as you're reproducing stuff. I'd suggest taking a log of what you're doing. Just open an another document, whether it's in Word, Notepad, whatever it is. Um, it can be useful for sharing later on, so you know something like Google Drive would be good. Um, but just make a note of what you think you have discovered, stuff you didn't know for sure before. You might have thought, but now I know for sure because I've tested this. And if you're in a situation where you've already got unit testing set up, then feel free to use unit tests instead of a console app. It's really anything that lets you definitely run specific bits of code with as little user input as possible because then it's reproducible. Mm. Running the same thing 10 times and nine times out of 10, it gave one answer. One time out of 10, it gave another answer. That's probably because you've done different user input. If you've got no user input, that's very unlikely to happen. Um, so yes, getting rid of user input is great. Um, and uh, log everything. Your main things are, can I debug into this? Can I reproduce it? And then can I just narrow it down all the time? What I love about this is it's like very similar to rubber duck programming, where you're talking to a rubber duck to describe the problem you're having. But instead <laughs> right. of talking to a rubber duck, you're talking to, to a console app. You're just to the code. Yeah. Right. You're talking directly to the code. Yeah. And I've never heard of that before. Oh, it's great. I, every, <laughs> I, every pair programming. If you if you can't pair program, you have a little rubber duck. I have worked with people who have like, in fact, this guy had a little frog. It's like, right, <laughs> explain your code to the frog, and if it's hard to explain, then it's not ready yet. Ooh, I like cool. that. That that is very cool. I, I can't tell you how many times I've gone into my boss's office, like help me work out this problem, and then as like I'm describing it to him, you oh, worked absolutely. it out. Yeah. And likewise, writing a Stack Overflow question and hit post. No, that's the answer. And sometimes it's then good to hit post anyway and immediately write the answer. Um, you know, that could help someone else later on. But yeah, this just this ability to narrow things down is the best way I think for most people to level up from where they are. It makes such a huge difference, and it's fun. Yes. Oh, well, thank you so much for showing us this. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Hope you learned something. A big shout out to the sponsor of this episode. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests.
See you next time.